and welcome to Burston Moor in North Devon. Um, you join me on what is a pretty windy, grey, overcast day. Uh, but it's the first day for a week where we haven't been inundated with rain. So I wanted to get out with the camera, see what I could find and see if I can make any pictures, even with the weather being as grim as it looks. And I have to say, even though the forecast is no rain, there's a great big black cloud over that way. So this might be a very short video. We'll see what happens. All right, so here we are on top of the moor. Uh, this is actually the start of my big project for 2023, where I'm going to try and trace the source of the River Torridge. Um, well, from the source all the way to the sea. Now, uh, the source is just over there so I'll just spin around so you can see from where I'm looking so behind me where the sort of pale brown finishes that is where the river Seckington rises uh, which is one of the sources of the river Torridge so look down that road uh, you can't really see on this camera it's sort of in that direction by the lovely car. So, and what we're going to do today is try and make some pictures in, well, what you can see around me. It's a moor. I'm a moor too. Uh, this is proper moor. And it's really quite bleak. But we can make pictures anywhere, as long as it's not raining. Right, so, we're going to start off with this tree over here which you can see behind me apologies for the video quality but I'm not using my gimbal because it's too damn windy so this tree looks quite interesting um, I'm not going to get the tripod out because if you have a look down here you can see one of the reasons why this is where it's the source of the river, because look at it. Even though this is the highest point for quite a long way around, it is just waterlogged. Look at that. Oh, where well, he disappears. So it's a challenging place to take photographs. There we go, one wobbly camera set up. And here comes the rain. So, for the first picture, I think I'm going to go all abstract today because I think we get the essence of the place rather than any specific detail. So, we will start just by getting a picture of this lovely tree. And I think with those woods framed in the background, there. That's looking suitably bleak, I have to say. So, F4 ISO 160, 125th per second. We're going Pep Ventosa. We're going to walk around this tree, taking lots of pictures. Uh, so the Pet Ventosa technique is where you take lots of pictures around something and then you blend them together. So you want to try and keep the same distance and the same settings. So I'm going to put the Horizon Smack Bang in the middle and the tree trunk there in the middle, right at the base so that I can always line up on that and then we'll just oop, rotate around try not to fall over too much a couple of steps at a time rising in the middle Pachink. Oh. So 
So although it feels quite remote here, we're actually right next to the A39, which is the main North Devon highway. Highway sounds a bit grand, really, for what it is. This isn't like some multi-lane masterpiece. This is what most people would consider quite a small road. It is interesting how the shape of the tree changes as you walk around. Not sure I'm going to be able to get into this bit, seems how deep that pond is. A nice one framing my car. Ooh. Oh, not too bad. be a bit brighter. I'm blowing everything out that side. So I'm going to do a second pass with some higher settings. I should have. Oh. I should uh, have metered all the way around before I started doing this. So I think I might have overexposed this set. Oh, squelch, squelch. But this is the joy of landscape photography. It gets you out oh, in the open. And you get to do your thing twice because you cocked it up the first time. Right, I think that is about where I started. So, right, so it's really bright in this direction, so I need to I'm gonna try this one at f4, 1 250th. I'm also going to try and do it a bit close to make the tree bigger. And now what I'm actually going to do is put that trunk I do the same thing but a little bit closer so the tree fills the frame a bit more. As I say, I don't know how well this is going to work. So there's some nice cloud action happening over there. And then I quite like that there. Okay everyone, I have um, retreated to the car because the wind just became too much out there. I think it's gusting at 60 today and it certainly felt like it. Uh, and my poor little squirrel here that I use for recording has blown out of my pocket and fallen into a big puddle. So I hope it's still working. It appears to be working. It's not supposed to be waterproof. Um, so I've switched to a lanyard solution. Maybe that'll work, maybe it won't. Uh, anyway, we'll have to see. So, what I'm going to do now, because uh, I am at the highest point of the moor here, we're at 228 metres right now, 
and right next to a uh, burial mound. There's about nine around here. Um, anyway, as I said, I'm going to go down the hill and just see if I can get you a, sh a view of where the Seckington water actually rises, um, which is down there. So we're just going to drive down the road. There's another little parking spot down there. Okay, folks, so I've just drift down the hill a little bit uh, to lower down the moor, just to be slightly out of the wind, because it was getting a bit too much for me. Um, and over here, uh, if you follow this hedge down there, hopefully, I'm pointing the right direction. Let's just move that. Yes, so, if you follow the line of this hedge here, all the way down to there, that is where second to water officially rises on the Ordnance Survey maps. And then, right, I'm just going to zoom you in. So, just there. And it follows the line of that hedge. Over there, and crosses the A39 just there by those trees and disappears into those woods. And that is where I'm going to be going next. Now whether that's today or not will depend on that big black cloud over there. Okay folks, um, I couldn't get much further down that path because it is just too waterlogged for my wellies. Um, and also it's just a bit too windy for me. So this might be the end of this video, in which case thanks for coming along and I'll see you all next time. I was a little disappointed that yesterday I didn't find something that actually looked like a river while I was looking for the source, um, so I decided to return today and have another look. Here's me driving in, and just in front of us you can see that tiny little bridge is the bridge over the second to water. Uh, so we're just going to follow this road up. Uh, on the left is Wellsford Moor Plantation. Uh, we're just going to be pulling into a little lay by up here and having a walk around Summerwell Moor Plantation. Hello everyone, and I'm back on my mission to trace the River Torridge from its source to the sea. In the previous video I was up on Burston Moor and uh, I failed to actually find the stream bit of Seckington Water. So today I've uh, just gone a little bit further downstream and like half a mile. Um, so when I was pointing out the hedge that went down and then it disappeared into some woods, those woods are behind me. Um, which is Summerwell Moor Plantation. Um, and behind me, down there, is Second to Water. Hurrah! I've actually found some water. And there's plenty of it around here. Uh, so, we'll just spin around a bit. Um, so behind me now is Wellsford Moor. Uh, Wellsford Moor Plantation. Moor Forestry. And this, uh, this side is Summerwell Moor, and uh, you can see there's been some logging behind me, so it's a clearer area. Uh, we've had a tremendous amount of rain in North Devon recently, and uh, I was lucky to get here, because most places got roads closed for the flooding, but it seems to be alright in this direction. But 
uh, I'll spin you around now and you'll be able to see how this gentle water is actually quite a raging torrent. So that is what I think on the map is actually sacking to water, emerging from the woods. Uh, I suspect in the summer that would be a trickle that you'd barely notice. And over here, which also looks like another stream, is actually just the drainage channel running next to the path into the woods. Which is also running at a fair old whack. And then, here, yeah, Sackington water disappears off. And somewhere, way, way, well, over there, a mile or so, it's actually where it joins the other tributary, uh, Clifford Water, which makes, and actually that's where it becomes, the River Torridge. Um, so the next challenge will probably be to go and see if we can find the source of the Clifford Water, and then find where the two meet. Thank mm -hmm. you.